Before I forget, I made myself a lovely little note that um, if you guys can, you should try to find, don't go out and buy this, by the way, like you either have it at home or a friend of yours has it. If you asked me for a packet at the beginning of the semester and I sent you a compass and stuff like that, I sent you a couple of these. They're round coffee filters. So again, if you're here in commerce, you'll just get yours with me. No big deal. Ah, really loud. Sorry about that, Zoom bill. <laughs> if you're here, you'll get one here. If you got a packet, then you've got one with you. But anyway, they're just round coffee filters. They're the ones that like sit down into the bin or whatever. I don't drink coffee, so anyway. Just a round coffee filter. If you don't have a round coffee filter, it won't be the end of the world. Um, but if you can locate those before Tuesday, um, it would be nice because we're going to do a couple of little activities with them talking about area of a circle and circumference of a circle. And these are nice hands-on things you can do pretty cheap with kids, okay, middle school kids and that kind of thing. Um, so if you don't get it by a Tuesday, it's okay. You can just follow along with us, no big deal. But if you have one, it's better to have that for yourself and some scissors. Um, I would say um, a co two coffee filters. <laughs> If you have one or borrow it from grandma or something, um, don't go buy them. It's not, it's not that important. Um, two coffee filters, a pair of scissors, and some tape. That's what you'll probably need for Tuesday. Heads up on that. I meant to mention it Tuesday. But yeah. <laughs> Life is scattered right now, so we do what we can. Okay. Yeah. That's it. What's out there? Um, just the semester long project, because you guys had your project on GeoGebra that was due on Tuesday, and the semester long project. I didn't give new assignments. Oh, yeah. I gave bonus homework, all right? And then you emailed it. Oh, and I emailed. What did I email? Yeah. 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 Instructions. This is due Tuesday, right? Okay. And it was what? It's nice. We have lovely sound effects in Congress today. I'm drawing up two singles. Two singles. Then the second one is um, draw a large acute triangle and duplicate it. Ooh, that's not good at all. There's lots of. And then draw a quad. Draw a name quad. It was an obtuse triangle. Sorry, you're just faster than me. A large <laughs> acute triangle. Oh, B. Acute. So an obtuse angle, label it, duplicate it. A large acute triangle, mm -hmm. label and duplicate. Right? Yeah. And then um, quad. Yeah. And you're going to make copy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if I remember correctly. Yeah. So that one's probably maybe the most difficult, but just remember all a quadrilateral is is four line segments and four angles, right? So if you can start with one line segment, like say, and I don't know, whatever this is. Here's your quad, okay? Start, like I would start with the base, you know? And then duplicate the base, okay? Here's the base, you know, however big that is. And then start doing, okay, let's duplicate the angle and then move over and then duplicate the segment. Just take it one piece at a time. Don't get overwhelmed by the fact that it's, oh my goodness, it's this quadrilateral, how am I gonna do that? Just four segments and four angles, you're just duplicating, right? That was it? Yeah. Okay, cool. Awesome, and that's due Tuesday. Yeah, and there were bonus homeworks if you want them. Did I put a due date on that? Yeah, okay, for Tuesday. Alexis asked a question. Okay, give me a second, Miss Alexis. Um, this is not on GeoGebra. Those are constructions by hand. That's a good question. 
Yeah, so when you do this, I want to see the compass marks, right? Yeah, you mentioned that on there. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So if you use, like I know that when Ryan was doing it, he was making the full circle. If you make the full circle, that's fine, leave the circle, okay? Don't erase stuff, I wanna see what you did. So all of these are by hands. So that's why like if you're duplicating this AD here, you're gonna make a compass mark here to let me know you made that arc and you know how long that is according to your compass. Not that you measured it on a ruler, okay? And then you're gonna do the same thing here and give me that mark so that I know, okay, they did that. By hand. I do. Yeah, just remind me. Good question, Miss Alexis. Thank you for the clarification. All right, so that's all that's out there. Great, moving on. That's not bad, guys. It's only three instructions. Y'all can do it. <laughs> I know. That'll so, also be turned in into. Uh huh. Yeah. You'll scan it and upload it just like everything else. I'm sorry, I know this might be like a dumb question, but which homeworks are the bonus homeworks? Um, I'm trying to dig them right now. Give me just a second. And it's not a stupid question. <laughs> it's a good question. So lesson 5.1. We need a copy here. One, two, and three. What did I do with those stupid things? Lesson so. 5.1. It must be in my office. So if it comes to my office, Maria, on the way out. Okay, it was five one, five two, and five three. And I loaded them in D two L um, Tuesday. I think I did. Pretty sure I did. Somebody would tell me if it wasn't there, right? <laughs> I swear I did it. They're, they're there. Right. Okay, good. <laughs> I swear I did it Tuesday afternoon, right after I left class, so that I would make sure they'd be there. So they're just three little handouts, basically. Well, it's two together. I think five one and five two are on one, and then five three is by itself. All right. Good questions. Okay. Let's do some. Geometry, it'll be fun. Okay. I don't know why the voices are coming out today, guys. <laughs> I got up early to create all the voices. You crazy. All right. Um, we're talking about circles. We haven't talked about circles yet. So it's good for us to look at those. I did give you a definition the other day for what a circle is, if everybody remembers. You can define a circle by a point that you'll call the center and by a distance that you'll call the radius, right? Okay, so it goes something like this. Given a point, we'll call it the center, and a segment, we'll call it the radius, it's the distance. A circle is all the points that given distance from the radius. I'm sorry, from the center. Yeah. Okay. So back in the olden days. <laughs> way before we had modern gizmos like these lovely uh, safety compasses come by and stuff like that, people would use a string, okay? So you'd say, okay, this, this is similar to what you have, um, if you have the metal compass, the, the, old, the old fashioned for us now, you would have the point, the pointy point part, and that would be a set point and you put it right there, and then you'd say, okay, I'm going to use this long. That's gonna be my radius. And you would attach a, 
attach a pencil to that, and then you do this. That should look familiar, right? This, the fact that my yarn is only so long, or my string is only so long, forces that radius to be this distance, okay? And then my pencil is just that given distance around, away from it. And people would actually have a really long piece of yarn so that they could put their pencil here, for instance. Oops. <laughs> Here, for instance, so now I can make the circle whose radius is this long. And it's a very versatile type of thing. That developed into what Ashley and Ryan have been using, which is the um, compass that's kind of pointy, right? One is a point and one's a pencil, and it develops into that. That's what most of us used when we were kids, right? Can I can steal that from you again. I'll switch here. Oh, sorry. I'll touch on the side, don't you? Okay. <laughs> there we go. So this would go in the center, the pointy part, and then you would just open this as wide as you want it and you'd make your circle, okay? So that's the idea behind the circle. Thank you, ma'am. <laughs> All right, so we need some stuff to go with this. I'm gonna make, uh-huh. Sorry, it says okay. the circle is all the given points that are, is all the points sorry. that are, <laughs> the given distance from the center. Sorry. Please, please, please keep me on track today. I'm having a rough day. It's the end of the eighth week, guys. That's officially halfway in the semester. <laughs> I know. It's like, woohoo, but I'm still over, overwhelmed and stressed. Okay. So for instance, there's a circle, right? We all know what a circle looks like, but it, we have a definition definition now, okay? But then what else do you know about it? So for instance, if I do, let's call this center of our circle A. It's a capital letter, it's a point, right? Okay, so we can literally talk about circle A now, okay? Because we'll deal with what its center is. If that was, the center was a Q, then we start call it circle Q. I can do these kinds of things. That is a radius. And say he has a distance of, I don't know, two centimeters. What's that? Two centimeters. Also a radius, right? And it's the same measure. So two centimeters as well, same distance. So now I've got four centimeters if you're adding, okay? It doesn't matter where I put this radius. And so we know that all what? All radii, that's the plural of radius, and see that, that, that plural thing coming back on us. All radii are what? It's a conjecture. All radii of a circle are congruent. They all have the same measure, right? And it's actually even more than a conjecture. It's probably a postulate. We can just assume it true because um, that's actually the, comes from the definition of the circle, right? They're all, all of the points on the edge of the circle are the given distance R away from the center. So they're all gonna be the same distance, they have to be, okay? That's how we created our circle, okay? But we know that all of our radii are congruent. What else you got? I'm just looking for vocabulary and Things we know about a circle, maybe. It's a 360 degrees. Okay. All circles. Are 360 degrees around from the first, uh, first point on the edge of the circle back to it. That point. That's what we mean by around, okay? So if I start at this point out here, I'm gonna call it B, and I go all the way around the circle until I get back to point B, okay? Back to that same point then I know that that's 360 degrees. And when we talk about that, we can measure that off of a protractor. 
right? So we're not gonna no normally use protractors in here, but we would know, for instance, let me, let me extend this radius across. What's it gonna be called whenever I extend it all the way across the circle? Diameter, everybody good with that? Yeah, let me give it a name. CD, so CD is a diameter. Okay, now it has to, in order to be a diameter, it has to go through the center of the circle, right? It's not enough to just go from one side of the circle to the other, it has to go through the center. So it basically, we know the relationship that two radius is equal to one diameter, right? Okay, so, or a diameter is twice, two radius, two times the radius, however you wanna think about that, okay? So if I measured the degrees rotational wise from C to D on that line, we know that's 180 degrees because it's a straight line. So we could think a couple of things. A semicircle, semicircle means half, right, is 180 degrees. So the top half here is 180 and the bottom half there is 180. We add them together, we get 360, okay? The question becomes, does it matter if it's this circle? Let's see if I can do this. Go back to my center here. Or my new circle. No. Still 360 degrees to travel the entire circumference of that circle, right? Okay, oh, there's another word, circumference. That means the distance around the circle, right? Along the edge, okay? So the question now becomes, okay, I've got two circles here. Little circle, big circle. They're both centered at A. So they're both circle A, right? So how in the world am I going to tell them apart? What's the difference between them? Yep, the smaller one has a shorter radius. Everybody agree with that? Okay, and it's about half, right? I tried to deliberately do that, about half. I didn't measure though, so <laughs> I don't know exactly. But it still goes 360 degrees around. It still has the same starting point. We have to start at the center. It's just that the radius is longer in the big guy than in the little one, okay? These happen to be concentric because they're inside of each other, but they didn't have to be. What if I had done that same thing using hopefully the same radius. I'm going with this circle close enough. <laughs> Let's call him circle E. Um, what if I had used him instead? Compare, here's what I want, here's what the point I'm getting at. Compare circle B, I'm sorry, circle A with the larger radius to circle E. We know that the radius is bigger in the bigger circle. Are they congruent? No, because the radius for the one is bigger than the radius for the other. Congruent means same size, same shape, right? Okay, so remember that, same size, same shape, it's congruent. Okay, so they're not congruent, but what are they? They're similar. Does it matter where I put my circle? Does it matter, are there any kind of sides or edges or angles or any weird stuff that would make them not similar? No. So here's a neat little thing. All circles are similar. Okay. The only difference to, between them that keeps them from being congruent or not congruent is the radius, okay? So the radius decides, determines, let's say, things like um, size and area, that kind of stuff. Okay, I need a couple more words. <laughs> We've already, hmm? Even circumference, but how about Okay, thank you. 
And then some circumference. So what is that? Let's get it de defined. It's like the perimeter of the circle. Okay, I don't want to say perimeter because that's a normally safe for polygons and stuff like that. So what is the perimeter of say a square? Four S. Yeah, so four S, we have formulas for that and stuff like that. Oh, we can come up with a formula. We know it probably. Um, so there are formulas for that, but it's the distance around the object, right? Is what the perimeter is. So we're going to say the distance around the circle for this, okay? Or the total distance for the edge, basically, okay? And there is a formula for circle, circumference. We'll actually work with that later next week. That's why I want the coffee grounds and stuff, or coffee, not coffee grounds, coffee filters. What is it? Two pi r. Two pi r. Okay. And we'll get to see, kind of develop where that formula comes from next week. So it'll be fun to play with it. While we're at it, we might as well throw in the other word that goes with circumference a lot. Hmm? Circling. Ooh, that's not what I was after. <laughs> but I, it's one of the words I wanted, but it's not right here. I was thinking area, right? So this is another one we'll talk about next week. So what is the area of something? We dealt with area a little bit with quads. We did the little um, index card activity, um, but we may not have put an area, a, a definition on it. Area for a circle is what? Here's the circumference all around around the edge, but it's what? Pi r squared. We have a formula, good, pi r squared. It's all this real estate that's inside, right? So how do we word that? The total square, we'll say units. Because we know it could be inches, feet, whatever, okay, that it takes. to fill the circle, right? Kind of the idea there. And I heard there's a formula, so it was A equals pi r squared. These are two formulas that a lot of times we just kind of expect people to know and they're just floating around in our heads and it's because we've worked with these a lot, with, cir with circles in particular. Um, people may not just have like, for, uh, for S on their head for um, perimeter of a square, but that's because why? It's easy because they're all the same and they go, oh, there's three of them and multiply. So they don't memorize that. But anytime you got pies running around, <laughs> it seems like people, we, we get people to memorize those more. So, okay, we got those. Now, the other thing I was gonna say about up here, we did this earlier whenever we were doing constructions, Remember when I said, just use your compass and just do that arc. Okay, you don't have to go all the way around the circle. You can just do the arc. And everybody's like, okay, cool. And nobody argued with me. So what do I mean when I say that? What's an arc? A portion of the circumference. Oh, an arc is a portion of the circumference. Okay. Just a little piece of the circle. It doesn't have to be all the way the entire circumference of the circle. It's just a little piece that's called an arc. Okay. And arcs have two things to them. Okay. There's an arc length, which I heard. That's like if I was measuring between these two points, the total actual linear distance. Okay. And then there's an arc angle measurement. Okay. That would be, let me, let me use this one in here because I've already got it colored out. Um, marked off. So if I look at this section of this circle, okay, let's see, let's D, we got E, let's put this F up here, okay. The arc length right here is CF, okay. The arc angle measure is the rotational distance that it takes to go that far. So the difference being, this might be two centimeters long, 
Okay, that link, like think, take your string and put it on the edge and see how long your string is. That's a link, okay? But this right here, whenever I'm talking about angle measure, that's rotational distance, right? So when we measure that, that's like, oh, it's a 40 degree angle, okay? We would get a protractor out to measure it or we would have some other markings in our drawing that help us to know where we are, okay? Uh, what was our, oh, yes ma'am. It's just a portion of the circumference. Okay. Okay, so one we would measure linearly, as in you would use a ruler, okay, to measure. And notice that we're talking measuring whenever we're talking about arc length. And then the other, the degree rotation, we would measure that using degrees, which is different than inches or feet or whatever. And that would be a protractor because that's that angle measurement. That's the difference. So you got two different things, arc length. Distance, arc, angle measure, and that's in degrees. Okay, that's the difference. And sometimes those get a little bit confusing, especially whenever we're working on problems like we'll do in about a week. Not not soon, but soon, soon enough. We'll be, you're welcome, Miss Samantha. Soon enough, we'll be talking about, um, like, let's compare this arc length and this arc angle and, and how we know the difference and we'll be doing this really cool spreadsheet -y thing, not spreadsheet, but table thing. And um, it gets a little jumbled in our head. So we'll figure out ways to tell the difference between those as we go along. Um, but that's what's going on, okay? What's this piece of the pie, so to speak, that I have shaded? There's a word for that. It's like a section of the circle, right? So sometimes you'll hear it called a sector or um, I'm trying to think of the other word that your book uses. Dang it. It'll come to me. But this entire piece, so it's like taking a part of the circle and normally it goes from the center out to the edge and just taking out that section. Okay. So we'll see that coming up. All right. There's one more word that I have not heard. I kind of alluded to it when I talked about the um, diameter. So let me give you one. So we said the diameter has to go from one side of the circle to the other, but it has to pass through the center, right? So, very good. That one, if it goes from one piece of the, or one point on the circle to another point on the circle, but it, it doesn't have to pass through the center. It can pass through the center, but it doesn't have to. Just any segment that combines or connects two pieces, two points on the circle, that guy is a chord, Ashley says. Any segment that connects two points on a circle. So in this case, the one that I just did right there, the chord is FD. Okay. And it just connects two points. Now, here's my question. Look at that generic definition I just put up there for a chord. Any segment that connects two points on a circle. Is C, D, is that a chord? Does it connect two points on the circle? Yep, you guys are right. Okay, so it does, but we don't normally call it a chord, right? It is, absolutely, it is. But we don't normally call it a chord because it's more specific because it goes through the center. So we call it a diameter, but it's still a chord. So anything we say about chords applies to your diameters. Yes, ma'am. Is the radius also called a chord? 
Right. No, because it's not going from a point on the circle to another point on the circle. Did I say that? Yes, on the circle. <laughs> okay. I'm like, did I write on the circle? Yeah. So they have to be points on the circle. The center is technically a point inside of the circle. It's not on the edge of the circle. That's what we mean when we say on the circle, it's on the edge of the circle. So the center is not one. So a radius is not a chord. That's a really great question. Hmm? Oh, the CF there? Not the way it is right now. So this is right here. The CF, the question is, is that a chord? Not the way it is right now, because right now it's actually a part of the circumference, but I can make a chord CF just by connecting those as a segment, right? So note that it has to be a segment, which we know means it's gotta be straight, right? Because all of our stuff up until now, the segments, the lines, the rays, all of those are straight. So now we have this curvy thing. <laughs> We can't even say a circle has a side because it's got, it's just one big curve, right? Um, so it's very difficult. Or if you talk at all about how many sides it has, you would maybe say it has one side. They don't only even say that because it's just a big curve, right? So yeah, so now I have chord CF. Okay, there's different kind of angles. So I've got some that are in here and I just wanna talk about them real quickly. Let me actually, let me redraw this because it's getting kind of big, dizzy. All right, we'll be screaming. So if you need to see something on that other page, let me know and I'll pull it back up. Okay. Hmm. I had A, C. If your picture is great, I don't want to change it, anything on you. F. How would you write CD as an arc? Oh, this is great. <laughs> Thank you. These are great questions. I love that y'all are like trying to figure out how that notation gonna look and this and that. So for instance, um, Ashley just asked about arc CF versus the segment CF, which one's a chord, one's not. So um, Alexis's question is how do I do make the difference? So arc CF is going to literally look like that. Kind of has a little half circle-y thing on it, basically. Whereas this, the chord CF is still going to be a line segment. You're absolutely right, Alexis. So it's still gonna have just a little segment across it, okay? So it becomes a little bit tricky on us because we have to really pay attention and make sure which one are they talking about here? Um, you're just gonna have to read the, the notation carefully. Good question, I love it. I'm really thinking, I love it. Okay, so we had this guy, angle DAF. I just um, copied it over so it's the same, hopefully as your last picture. He's a special angle because he goes through the center the center as the vertex. He's called a central angle. Okay. So those guys, um, those guys are special angles and they're the ones we would normally mess with, right? We would probably kind of say, oh, it's not quite 90 degrees. It's probably more like 100, 120. How big is that angle? And the fact that it's centered perfectly with its vertex helps me with a few properties and that's what we'll see as we go along. So he's a central angle. The other one, um, and we didn't have this one in there. Oh, we, oh, we have two. So let me give you, um, let me give you the one we have. This was C and we had drawn do I want? Okay. We've drawn this guy and we had drawn this guy. So that angle was DAF. Sorry, I meant to mark it so everybody knows which angle I was talking about for the central. The central angle was DAF. Okay, 
but <laughs> this is terrible guys, I'm sorry. Assume those meet at C. <laughs> okay. Um, this guy, let's call him angle CFD. How is he different from the angle DAF that we just looked at? A little bit more. Vertex is not the center of the circle. Okay, the, the vertex isn't the center of the circle. Where is it? On the circle? Yes, the vertex is a point on the circle. Okay, so this one happens to be a special one. Okay, he's called an inscribed angle. I think what Maria was getting at was that this one is a special one because he actually has his two endpoints here on the angle as the um, endpoints of the diameter. That's, I think, what you meant by being on the center. Is that, or am I totally misreading you? Sorry. Okay. So she says yes. Okay. So um, this one's special because he has his endpoints on the, the diameter. They don't have to. So an inscribed angle. Um, the vertex and both endpoints are on the circle. Okay, so I'll give you another example that's not one that's lined up perfectly well for us. Vertex and both of the endpoints, and these are all, um, notice that our angles here are indeed made out of segments instead of rays, so they do have endpoints. They're not on arrows forever and ever and ever, right? Okay, so both the vertex and the endpoints, points on the circle. All right, here's an example. Let me do, hmm, I'm going to put a point down here. If we didn't have any points down here, I'm going to call him G. And I'm going to take both of these cords across the circle and let's call that I. Angle D I G, dig. Ah. I don't do that very often. Whenever I have one that's right there, it's like, yes, do it. <laughs> the book does it all the time. Okay, angle D I G. Notice that his vertex is on the circle. Both of the endpoints are on the circle, but he doesn't go through the center at all. Okay. So he's an inscribed angle. He's just not that special guy that had his endpoints as the ends of the diameter. He's still inscribed. Okay. All right. We'll add him to the list. Inscribed angles. Okay. All right. So um, the first section in your book, is everybody? This is cool. No worries about about circles. Probably a lot of terminology that maybe you haven't heard or haven't heard in a while, but go back through. Make sure you, as I throw these words at you, you're not freaking out. Mm -hmm. Is there a specific term for um, CFD because of the angle? Mm -hmm. And in fact, I'll give you brownie points if you tell me something about CFD. Look really closely. Let me put it up. Is the radius bisect the vertex angle? No, I think that's just because of the way we have it drawn. And it actually looks a little bit bigger over here than over there. So but looks look specifically at CFD. What did you say? What did you say? It looks like it's 90 degrees, doesn't it? CFD, right angle. That's what you said, right? Yeah. Right angle, yeah. So there's an interesting little conjecture, and we'll prove it later, that says if you have an inscribed angle and it matches up with the diameter, basically, it actually calls it a semicircle, okay, but that's half of the circle, which is what that means, um, that that inscribed angle, his measurement will be 90 degrees. So it's a conjecture, we'll prove it later. Mm -hmm. Yeah, really cool. So he does have, um, I think they call him a semicircle inscribed. 
inscribed in a semicircle or something like that. But he has special properties, which is awesome. Okay. So anyway, your book has all kinds of stuff about chords in particular. So um, I don't want to do tons and tons and tons of them. But right now, because we're about to, it's almost three, and I want to give out tests and talk about that and all that. But um, I will say the one that you should start thinking about today, let me draw you a circle so you can see him. And I will try to keep my circles relatively small because <laughs> they do take up a lot of space on your paper if you draw them too big and all that. Um, how about H? Okay. It goes like this. If I have two chords in this circle and they are congruent. Okay, so let me kind of cut a piece off here of the circle and I'll try to get about the same measurement. That's what congruent means. So let me, I don't want them to be parallel. I'm going to deliberately tilt them if that makes sense. All right. Okay. And then I'll do that and that forces them to be congruent, whether I did a good job or not. <laughs> okay. But I just don't want them to be parallel because I don't want us to see some weird thing going on there that's not really going on. Okay. I have two chords that are congruent. What do we think? That's all I got. What, what might be true? Which angles? She's drawing me a picture here. I know, I'm sorry. That's okay. It's no. Um, maybe later we might see something like that. So she's kind of saying here and here. I think you're going to have more luck proving something like that if you go more towards triangles. And I'll show you that in a second. Um, okay, so what about some area? I've got a little comment here from Mary that says the arc length may be the same. So the arc length that is defined there. So let me get some letters going. J, K, L, M. Okay. So what we're saying is the chord J, K is congruent to the chord L, M. Okay. And I'm hearing, hey, maybe this arc length over here that goes from here to here is the same as this arc length over here that goes from here to here. Okay. And then I heard in here, would the sector that's defined there be the same? So that segment of the, so of the um, circle. So I'm hearing these guys are congruent and we will see that later, you're correct. And then I'm hearing, I think the area is what you said, yes. So if I chop off this piece and I chop off that piece, would it fill the same amount? Does that make sense? Okay, and then I'm gonna kind of modify what Ashley's saying. She's trying to kind of give me an angly thing. The reason why it's a problem is because you're on the curve. Okay. And angles just by definition need to be straight, straight edges. Okay. But what about this? J H A. And L H M. Okay. And before you say vertical angles, I deliberately made those not parallel so they don't have vertical angles. <laughs> All right. Now, if we had vertical angles in there, it would be okay. But a vertical angle has to be from a straight line crossing with a straight line. And these clearly have edges on them or, or angles on them. Mm -hmm. Couldn't we do triangle congruency there since we know the um, hypotenuse ish? The longer legs are congruent and then both of the other legs are the radius, which means they're congruent. I was about to say, how in the other way, how in the world do you know anything about those other lines? I didn't say a word about them, but she said they're 
the radius. And we know all radii are congruent, right? Okay, so I agree. In fact, no matter what we know about these triangles, <laughs> these guys, let me do a triple one here, are any triangle that I do that goes from the edge of the circle and hits in the center here, those radii are congruent. It's an isosceles triangle, period, right? So we know those are congruent and it works the same way on the other side, absolutely. Okay, so now I've got what triangle congruency? Side, side, side. Are we agree? So that guy works out really nice for us. These are congruent. So now, yes, absolutely, Miss Ashley, I can start talking about those angles in there. Yep. So we know that those triangles are congruent, so therefore all their angles are congruent. So you could totally pick on K here and M here and say those are congruent. Yep. I think that's what you were kind of after, but yeah, we, <laughs> because the curves down there, it's hard to, to deal with that. We have to have straight, straight lines. Yeah. So there's some kind of cool things that we're going to deal with on Tuesday. Um, I'm not going to go into any kind of proofing right now because we need a little bit of a break and we're going to talk about the proofing on the test. So um, that's it there. Let me real quickly. So are we okay with what we've done so far on circles? Having an idea of chords and different things like that. So far it's kind of definitions and a little bit of conjecture that we've got going on. Um, let me look at the roster. Um, I'm going to continue to talk and record and we're gonna talk about the test. But if you, for instance, like Jessica is about to have to leave, if you have to leave, you might boot up the video later and just watch the last 15 minutes once you have your test. It might make more sense if you have the test in front of you. I'll put like my key up here. Um, the other thing to know is that there were two different versions of the test. So the people who tested in Commerce all got the same and um, people who had, were at one of my testing sites, even people at the ACC, y'all got a different version. So your test is slightly different than what I'm going to show here. So if you're going through your test and you're like, oh my goodness, what's going on here? You can always ask some questions, take a look, that kind of stuff. No worries. We could do a Zoom or something like that if we need to if you're not here in commerce to ask questions. So let me call roll real quickly. And then um, if you don't have your test in front of you and you want to take off, that is okay. Just remember that there's going to be a recording. If you would like to come back and see it, don't take off yet. I'm calling roll. Oh, that's Jessica. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Her, I know. And I don't see Gabriel. Mm, I don't see Matthew. I don't see Carolyn. Mondre, I see you. Elijah, I got you. Samantha, I got you. And you're welcome to hang around. I just think it'll be more useful if you're watching with something in front of you. Mary, I've got you. Ryan, I've got you. I don't see Garrett. I do see Christina. I got you. I don't see Cameron. So Elijah, Mary, Samantha, Demandre, Christina, I've got, and Alexis. I've got all of you guys. If y'all want to stay around, that's great. No worries. Okay. So let me just real quickly go through a couple of the questions that I think are um, the most, maybe I don't want to say tricky, but difficult. <laughs> The most problems, and you guys, I'll give you all's back in just a bit. Sorry. So I haven't recorded your phrase yet. I need to add. I'll get there. I know it's so distressing. They want it so badly. Okay. I noticed <laughs> on number two, it was the one about the mathematical postulate that a lot of you gave me a mathematical statement deductively derived from axioms, definitions, and previously proven statements. That's the one we did in class, right? In class, we talked about a theorem and what a theorem is, and that would have been A, okay? 
but I'm not asking for the theorem here. I'm asking for postulate. So when you're reading through these, you can't just assume, oh, I know it's this one we did in class. You have to be a little careful. So postulate is something we assume to be true, and then we use it to make other statements proven, right? Okay. So just a slight difference there. But I know that we did one in class, and it was on theorem, and I think people kind of just, oh, that's the one, and didn't think too much about it. Um, everybody did really great, actually. I was really pleased with this one. It's uh, number 13 on the one from class, where we were using the diagram to give an example of the following. Now, I've got all of the options listed out here, but you only had to give me one, right? So vertical angles, for instance, one and four. Okay. And everybody pretty much did a really great job on that. The only ones that you, anybody had problems with was the very last one, and that was the one that were supplemental but not adjacent, okay? So I had some that were two and four. Well, those are adjacent, okay? So that you can't use those, <laughs> okay? But uh, again, there's lots of options there and you guys did great on it. Few that had a couple of questions, but not too bad. Um, so on the tell me about these pictures one, um, I felt like this was kind of give me points, but then I ended up with a couple of problems. So this guy right here, I got several people who told me he was a rhombus. Okay, he's not a rhombus because the rhombus has to have all four sides congruent, right? This one is a kite because he's got two adjacent sets of congruent sides. So kind of look at him and see what picture he looks like. He looks like a kite you would fly. Is that a question? So I know hmm? one of the ladies came and she came up here like, hmm. I didn't know how else to explain these. So I, I saw your little note and I I think I gave you a smiley face. Okay. So for something like this, you wouldn't have to explain. This was just basically wanting you to identify it. So there's not a lot of work. Yeah. You could have, if you wanted to explain it, I guess given me a definition like I just gave to you, but yeah. So most people got trapezoid. Most people got right triangle. Some people stressed about this one. Um, I got a couple of isosceles triangles and I deliberately didn't mark them congruent on purpose because I was looking for either scalene or obtuse. And some people gave me one and some people gave me the other one and that's fine. So I just wanted to make sure you knew some of those the, uh, description words, basically. All right. Um, what's wrong with these pictures? The side of the are parallel, you guys did great. Oh, I'm gonna mention this. Number 16 on this particular version of the test. A lot of you gave me the angle measurements, but you didn't do the last portion here. Give a reason beside each answer. So I really wanted right here, like alternate interior with angle four, okay? And it's, I know sometimes we just say, oh, those are alternate interior angles. But remember, you have to tell me which alternate interior angles so that I can get a little more specific with you, or you can get a little more specific with me, so I know you know which one it is. So one and four are also in an interior. Okay, that's fine. Some of you didn't give me anything. Some of you gave me some math over here and I could kind of piece together what you were doing. And, and so you got credit for that. But um, a lot of you just gave me the angle measurements. So you did not get full credit if you didn't do that second piece. And then a couple of you write a little bigger and I was like, okay, if I do this question again for you guys, what I'll probably do is shrink the picture so that it's a smaller picture and you have more space for writing because some of you kind of bumped into stuff. So sorry about that. Okay, great job with those. What's wrong with the diagram? I'm not showing you necessarily my picture because some of you told me different things that are wrong with the diagram because like on this one, I was actually looking for um, the exterior angle theorem, right? So 130 should equal these two, which are only 120. So clearly they don't add up, right? So that's the one I was after. But some of you gave me other stuff like, oh, this guy has to be next to a 50 degree and then that doesn't add up to 180. Or there was one other, no, it wasn't on this one. On one, one of the what's wrong here, this what's wrong guy. Um, this one I expected people to add up to 180 and say, oh, that doesn't match that one. But instead people said, oh, he's gotta be 45 degrees. And so then he's not, not adding up to 180. So it doesn't matter to me how you got there as long as you got there and your answer is sound and you showed me what you meant. 
So that's all. I don't want you to necessarily go, oh, what's her answer or mine's wrong or whatever. That's not true. Okay. Remember that as long as you get to the right place and your math is correct, I'll follow you. Okay. So it doesn't have to be exactly mine, especially on proofs. And that's where I want to look at. Okay. This first proof, everybody pretty much got um, everything correct. I really wanted this guy to be substitution, substituting in um, the four here um, to get down there. Some of you told me transitive, and I don't remember anybody else giving me a different answer, but those are very integrated or interchangeable, so I'm okay with either one of those. So most of you did really well on the flow chart. This one stressed people out. <laughs> and I think it's because all of a sudden, boom, there's some algebra. What? Algebra? <laughs> so, like, I know a couple of people ask me, would you come here and show me this? So, the first step is always whatever was given, right? So, this said solve this guy. So, that was what was given. This, you just had to use your properties. So, subtraction, subtraction, and the division property. Or you could have used multiplication instead of division, that's fine, because there's they're, they're opposite operations, right? So no worries. So that one's not too bad. The one that I think was bugging people was the last one. So um, I will say, if you lost points on the very last proof, I'm just putting mine up there, you can play with it and see what you think. Um, then it's probably a couple of reasons. Some of you left off your measurements, the little M guys. You just said angle four plus angle six equals 180. Okay, so you need to put the little M there if you're dealing with equals and pluses. Okay, um, some of you did weird stuff like tell me measure of angle four is congruent to measure of angle eight because we're used to using the congruency signs. And some of you just kind of skip the step. So for instance, um, if you went and, and you didn't again have to do it in my order, as long as you had good solid stuff, you're fine. If you went, um, if you didn't, if you didn't tell me angle four is congruent to angle eight, some people just went straight to the measurement. That's what they did. They went measure of angle four equals measure of angle eight and said it was because of corresponding angles. Well, that's not exactly true. The corresponding angles theorem or conjecture or whatever says angle four is congruent to angle eight. And then we use the definition of congruency to say that means that their measures are equal. Okay, so you just have to do a little bit of that kind of stuff. And then at the end, if you have them adding up to equal 180, it's not enough to just stop there. You have to then say, so therefore they're supplemental. And that's the definition of supplemental. So if you lost points, it might be on one of those little definition-y things that you just left out. So, but actually, I was pretty happy, and if you got most of that in there on the last proof, you probably got three of the five points, so good job. So you got a little farther, you got four, that kind of thing. Um, I was pretty happy with even the proofs because I felt like you guys were prepped for it, ready to go. All right, any questions from Zoomville? <laughs> nope, we're out. <laughs> so I'll get y'all's tests finished up adding them up and then I'll scan them and I'll email them out to you, okay? I'm going to try to do that whenever I get back to my office. All right, then I'm stopping the recording. Everybody have a great weekend. It is the end of the eighth week. We're halfway done, officially.